Hello, I'm just out here tinkering with the stuff. As you can see, I got a lot of new sand. I'm actually planning on replacing a lot of my old sand before for quite a few years now. Been having trouble with the sand. And yes, I know it's a mess in here. A lot of the problems I've been having with my castings have been due to, for the surface finish and everything, has become, been due to my sand is all worn out. I've been fighting with it for years now and it's, yeah, I have too much, I don't have the permeability anymore and it's actually, the clay is worn out in it so it's actually requiring more moisture to create a bond. So that excess moisture when you pour the metal in is giving me my defects I'm getting. So I'm making new sand. That's kind of another goal that I was planning on this year for the casting stuff. I've got the furnace out already. I'm going to fire it the last time on Satanite. Just do it on propane. I'll set it up. I'll time it. I'll set probably 10 or 15 minute timer and I'll just fast track it on the video. But. I'll do one test with a Satanite and one test with the ITC 100 in it. That way I could test them side by side if it actually makes any difference at all. Uh, let's go throw a match in this thing and start it up. Fire this now and we'll. F Sorry about the wind but ahead of time. The Every day it's been nice out, it's been windy to no end, to the point it would blow the camera over, so. Yeah. Or it's rained, that's why it's taken so long to get these videos out. I'm about out of propane, so we'll see how far we can go. And I'll just set the timer for the same. Alright, let's go get started. Okay, I got the furnace all coated. It has the ITC 100 on it finally. I let it set for a few days so it fully dried and everything so it's bone dry now so I'll fire it up and bring it up to temperature see how much of a difference it makes. I'll move you over to the other side so camera angles are the same. Okay, got a new tank on the thing. The other one was empty. Now let's see what it'll do.
1,202 degrees Celsius or 1,200 degrees Celsius. almost 2200 degrees Fahrenheit. That should be enough to melt bronze, no problem. I've had a lot of questions about my burner. It's a quickie burner, it's mostly made out of pipe fittings and stuff pipe fittings and some copper tube and some and a 25 thousandths MIG tip and 025 the oil line comes in here You've got compressed air propane here it's just a T I turn one off when I'm working the other so they're never on at the same time I didn't have a regulator for this thing so turn the propane off so this regular might look a little familiar because it's the exact same as yeah use what you got it works this is an extension line for a camp stove they run to the big propane tanks to use the little bottles on the Coleman stoves and stuff so you gotta imagine all the power of this with the regulator and everything. That's creating that much heat. So this was just designed for the preheat line. The oil I use, or the compressed air, I usually run about 30 psi, 30, 35, maybe 40 at most. And yeah. That gives a good atomization and a good vacuum also for the oil. For the oil, I like running cooking oil, mainly because it runs clean, it doesn't create any problems. All the problems I've had in the past with it clogging up was because I was mixing the cooking oil and the motor oil together. Or switching back and forth and it would collect a little bit in the burner. And when you do that, those two mix and it creates like a booger that clogs up everything and the blower the same blower I've always had is just on a speed from a ceiling fan speed controller that's pretty much my burner it just slips right into the we were on the furnace. Yeah, you can see it right there. That's all my burner is. It works pretty good for me, anyways.
There's 15 minutes. That thing is hot. I got tired of getting flash burn from the UV coming off that thing, so yeah, I think we're good now.
enter a nice blue color on the outside from the heat bluing. Right now it's bronze, but towards the ends it's going blue. So it looks like blue flames all over it. It's amusing because once the steel gets hot, it gets so malleable that it actually bends under its own weight. Until it finally just burns itself off. I got these drilled out. I just took drill press to them. Just got a bolt stuck in it for right now. But as soon as I get it, next time I get the forge out, I'll start bending everything over to where it needs to be. That should make the tongs for these. Pretty simple. I'll just bend them over. So they match the profile on the sides, just one plate at the top. Then bend these back a little bit so they go straight up, just like my other tongs did. That way it's a lot more comfortable for me. Part way done. I'll make a rivet to go in here when I get everything bent up. But for now, this is fine as is. Okay, I got the furnace finally done. We got everything ready to go. And it's ready for its first melt. big boy in there already. This thing's massive. The tongs and stuff I'll finish up off camera. I bent them up just roughly but I'll have to heat them up in the forge right here and straighten them back out and bend them up and then I'll weld everything on. I was having problems doing video of welding because the camera screws up afterwards so I've stopped showing welding but yeah the furnace is ready to go it has a little crack right here I'm not sure what it's why it keeps doing it but it's not moving or anything it's nice and flat and it's meeting the furnace lid real nicely so If nothing else, it's just cosmetic, really. And I'll just take uh, another coating of the ITC 100, just put it on the top. That's all it really needs. But that's ready to go. This was one of the problems I was having with my castings, the aluminum castings. The tweer angle on the thing was not right, and it kept heating the bottom of the crucibles and the plinth blocks. So, as I'm measuring the metal on the top that's molten for the correct pouring temperature, 
I'd still keep ending up with per little pinhole porosity in the castings. I could never figure out why. Due to heating the bottom of the crucible and stuff up, it actually superheated the metal down in the bottom of the crucible, which is where all the gas was forming. I've got the twir and the burner angle and everything fixed, so it won't do that anymore. So we should be good there. I did get the piece cut off of the degassing or the half ball shape I made. It's not very flat, but it doesn't really need to be. It's flat enough. Drilled a bunch of 5 16 inch holes and 3 16 all over it. It's definitely not pretty or anything, but it, it's going to be plunged into molten metal and deal with hot chlorine gas over and over again so it won't be pretty if it was just plug weld in the bottom and welded the nut on right here so if I need to replace it I just have to grind that little bit off the bottom and this whole thing will unscrew off so my old one was about sixteenth of an inch thick this one's about three sixteenths to a quarter inch so this should last a lot longer. Yeah. I think this tool worked pretty good. I just took the grinder to it to clean up the surface of this so it wasn't so raggedy. Yeah, it worked really well and didn't leave any marks or anything in the finish as you saw. If I had a bigger piece of steel, I just had that thin one. That's why I used it. If I had a wider piece, I could make a lot bigger bowls and ladles and everything else for scooping the metal out or casting with lead or whatever. Make my own ladles and whatever I want. Uh, I think I'm going to call it here. Thanks for watching. See ya. So I'll get back on the tool and cutter grinder stuff as soon as I get all this stuff cleaned up because it's a mess in here. It looks like a teddy bear exploded from all the K.O. wool everywhere. Then I'll get back on this because a lot of people are waiting on me to sharpen things for them. And I needed the forge to make up the new piece of steel for the guide rails. So, next time I get the forge out.